Hey everyone, today's video I'm going to be explaining the two reasons why Hashimoto's patients suffer neuropathy pain. So we're talking about numbing, tingling, burning pain, could be cold, could be heat, and they suffer that pain even though their TSH is normal and even though they're taking levothyroxine. So if you have Hashimoto's and your TSH looks normal but you still have neuropathy pain, I think you're going to find today's video very helpful. Hashimoto's, of course, is a autoimmune thyroid condition. It's the most common cause of hypothyroidism. About 9 out of 10 people that have uh, hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's, whether they've been tested for it or not. Uh, and um, unfortunately, it takes about 7 to 10 years to get diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And even when you do get diagnosed, uh, it's an autoimmune condition, right? But the endocrinologist usually doesn't do anything for the autoimmune side of it. What you usually get is levothyroxine or Synthroid because you, know, you can't make thyroid hormones and you need that. And so when your TSH gets normalized and your free T4 gets normalized, you're fixed, right? Like you're better. Uh, however, a big chunk of people don't feel better, right? Uh, people that I see, I probably see 30 Hashimoto's patients a month that are taking, t uh, taking their thyroid hormones and their TSH is normal, but they still don't feel good. Well, one of the ways they don't feel good is a lot of these people have what we call neuropathic symptoms. Now, neuropathic just means nerve damage. And so what that shows up as is could be numbing, could be tingling, could be burning pain, could be abnormal feelings of hot and cold. Certain things that are uh, certain things are painful that shouldn't be something we call hyperalgesia. And the two reasons that Hashimoto's patients have uh, that nerve damage and those nerve uh, symptoms is because Hashimoto's causes nerve damage. It causes damage to a type of nerve called autonomic nerve fibers, and it causes damage to a type of nerve fiber called somatosensory. Autonomic, which I'm covering in a different video, uh, really just means delivering uh, blood flow and blood pressure and organ function. And somatosensory means taking the signals that come from your joints and your muscles and your skin, right? And in somatosensory, there are large fiber and small fiber. And research has shown, of course, I'll link to it, that a big chunk of Hashimoto's patients have this nerve damage, even if their TSH is normal, even if they're taking the levothyroxine. So they don't have to be hypothyroid in order to have this. Now, why is this happening? Well, the science is not super clear on why they think it's happening. There's a couple major reasons. Uh, one is, you know, Hashimoto's is inflammatory, and some of the inflammatory changes that happen from that can damage the nerves. There's things like oxidative stress. There might even be a cross reaction that occurs, meaning that the autoimmune process that's fueling the Hashimoto's is also fueling an antibody uh, mediated attack on the nerves. Uh, but again, they don't really know. There hasn't been a lot of good physiological study to say, well, why exactly is it damaging the nerves? But we do know that a huge chunk of people with Hashimoto's have that nerve damage. So what do you do? Well, you better make sure you're working with someone that understands that, hey, Hashimoto's patients can have these symptoms and that just taking levothyroxine and just getting your TSH normal is not it. That's not 100% of the problem. So wh why do I think it's still happening? Well, I can tell you, and I've made a lot of videos on this before, that there's basically two kinds of problems with your thyroid hormones, and Hashimoto's likes to create both of them. First thing it likes to do is create a quantity problem, right? Because since Hashimoto's is targeting the inside of your thyroid gland, it's blowing it up, it's going to decrease your ability to make thyroid hormones, okay? That's a quantity problem, and that's what the blood work can tell you. Blood work can say, oh, your TSH is here, your free T4 is here, but the blood work can't tell you if you're using those hormones, right? Using the hormones is the responsibility of these things called your thyroid hormone receptors. And they're like a little antenna in every one of your cells, but you can't like do a blood test for those. But those receptors can be blocked. They can be blunted. We know this from all the research that's been done. And so what can happen is, is you can have normal TSH, normal free T4, but not be functioning like you have normal TSH and normal free T4, right? You can be functioning like your hypothyroid. And so that is where I think a lot of these neuropathic symptoms come from. Now, you might say, but why don't all Hashimoto's patients have neuropathic symptoms? That's because there's a lot of different phenotypes. <laughs> now, one of my favorite things to talk about is these things called immunophenotypes. Now, a phenotype just means what does something look like, right? And an immunophenotype means what does your immune system look like? And here's the thing about Hashimoto's. This, really, this is the thing for everybody. You've each got your own immunophenotype. Yes, you may have been diagnosed Hashimoto's. Yes, you may have had some similar symptoms as some other people, but what your immune system is doing is unique to you. I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. Like if you tell me, hey, uh, I have black hair and uh, my family is originally from uh, Italy. Okay, well, I don't know what your fingerprint's going to look like, right? 
See, that's the thing. We've all got the same sort of parts, right, even in our immune system, but we've each got our own fingerprint because that fingerprint is based on a lifetime of experience and exposures, and it's unique to you. And I think that that is, and I've found this, that knowing someone's immunophenotype is critical to getting the correct treatment. I mean, I can tell you guys some different cases. Like one of the tests that I like to do is called lymphocyte immunophenotyping, right? And that's where we do direct measurement of these immune system cells. And we say, hey, what is your immune system doing, right? So I've shown this example here, right? So here's a lady with Hashimoto's. And you can see that on these markers that this batch here is high and that little batch there is high. And here's the thing, her diagnosis of Hashimoto's couldn't predict that. And her symptoms, even if she had neuropathy, couldn't predict that that's exactly what that's gonna look like. But now that I know that that's what that looks like, I can target those specifically with treatment in order to really tailor make what the treatment is for her, right? And remember, this is beyond Synthroid, this is beyond levothyroxine. Her TSH is normal, her free T4 is normal, but she's still suffering and her immune system is still abnormal. So I think that's the key. So make sure that you're working with someone that understands how complex Hashimoto's is. Yes, you're hypothyroid and you had to take thyroid medication, but if you're still suffering symptoms, especially neuropathy symptoms like we've talked about, and your TSH is normal and your free T4 is normal, there's something else going on. And that's something else, I mean, there's a lot of things we could talk about, right? We could talk about food sensitivities. Uh, we could talk about nutrient deficiencies. We could talk about oxidative stress. We could talk about cross-reaction. You gotta make sure you're working with someone that understands all of those things because neuropathy, uh, about what is it, 35, 40% of people with Hashimoto's have this neuropathy damage. And we talked about the two reasons why it occurs, because Hashimoto's creates nerve damage in autonomic fibers and somatosensory fibers. So treating that means we gotta know what your phenotype is. We gotta know a lot of things. We might even have to do what I call uh, brain-based rehabilitation for that. So anyway, I, I hope you found today helpful. Just know if you've got Hashimoto's and you've got neuropathy symptoms, uh, there is hope, but you got to make sure you figure out what your phenotype is. and You got to work out work with someone that understands the whole complexity of the situation because it is not simple. Okay, I'll see you next time.